Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.6. In this video, I'll be reviewing the concept of hooks within Harlow 3.3. In Harlow, many macros affect something called hooks. We've actually already seen an example of hooks in the use of the if macro. So let me pull up example one and let's look at this. We saw when we use the set macro, we can set the value of a variable. We also notice when we use the if macro that we can create comparisons and then we can do something as a result of that comparison. Think of it in the English phrase as, if this expression is true, do this. To do this part is a hook. In fact, we see that right here in this particular example. This is a hook. And we can see the use of single, open, and closing square brackets within Harlow, indicating a hook. Now, a hook is a very powerful concept within Harlow 3.3. It allows us to pair macros with particular sections of text and collections of other macros and affect them in particular ways. One of the most common uses of hooks is to actually style particular text in certain ways. So let me move over and introduce some more macros and how they're combined with hooks. Moving to example two, we see something a little bit different. Notice this is a new macro called a text color with a hyphen in between. I have a color here green, and then I have another corresponding macro or corresponding hook for this macro. In this particular case, let's go ahead and shift the start story over to example two, go to build, and let's go over to play. And notice the text will be green. So in this particular case, the hook in the single open and close square brackets is applying to this particular selection of text. And the macro text green is applying the green color to this text. So hooks are not only the do this part of, we're using a comparison within the if macro, they also allow us to style text in particular ways. Now I'm going to pause here and let's talk a little bit about how we understand colors. Now Harlow is built on another programming language called JavaScript and works within a web browser, so it works with another concept called cascading style sheets. Now, none of those particular technologies are important for this video other than the fact that Harlow is built on other things. One of these other things is how we represent colors within computers. There are millions of possible computer, possible colors, million possible computers, millions of possible colors a computer could represent. To make this a little easier for humans to understand, we often represent colors, especially in web environments, like in a web browser, in a particular set of named colors. So you, in these, you see in this particular case, green is a named color. This is a built-in color within Harlow. It's also a built-in color on the technologies in which it is based. And so when we want to engage with particular colors, such as styling a text in a certain way using a particular color, we can work with them that way. Now I paused here in particular because I want to point out that colors is within what is an option within the toolbar provided by Harlow 3.3. So if I wanted to click this, notice we can see default text color. And what do I want to affect? The attached hook. And then I can kind of look at the example. Notice the default color, the flat color, and I can pick one of the built-in colors. And this is why I paused to go over this. So I could pick a particular color that's built into Harlow, which again is based on the existing technologies in which it uses, to style this. So if I wanted to, I could style it in this particular way. Click add, and then notice it said background color orange. So let's pause here and talk about this other macro called background. So in example two, I used a text color to change the color of text. In example three, I'm using background, BG in this case, as an, as an alias of it, to change the background color of the text. So let's now change the start to example three, go ahead and build and play, and let's look at this. And notice the background is, is a different color. Now notice in each case, example one, example two, and example three, we're using hooks across all of these. These are single open and close square brackets at the start and the ending of the selection we want to apply something to. So we're using them with the if macro, we're using them with the text color macro, and we're using them with the background, or in this case the BG macro. Now let's kind of expand the use of particular styling macros, the text color in the background, and talk about something else. In Harlow, one of the categories of macros is something called a changer. A changer is particularly important within macro because we can save its value as the value of a variable. In other words, we can set up particular styles, save them as the value of a variable, and then use the variable as if it was a macro in other future instances to apply the same styles or show text in a particular way. 
Let's look at an example of this. So I'm going to move over to example four in this case. And notice it says set example two. And then notice again the use of background BG, the macro, and it's the value of a variable. This can seem a little bit strange, but again, this is a category of macro within Harlow called a changer. And these are one of the things we can use as the value of variables within Harlow. And in fact, this is a very possible, a very powerful and possible combination that we might want to use in authors. If we have a particular thing we want to style or a particular usage we want to present, we can define it one time and then use it many times after this. And this is very useful. So in this particular case, I have background right here set to green. And then you just notice right here, I'm using a variable and a story variable. Notice the dollar sign. And I'm applying it to a new hook right here. It's attached to a different hook. And the value of the variable is a changer macro. And so it is acting as if it was the macro right here being attached to this hook. So let's go ahead and change the start to passage four right here, example four. And let's go ahead and build and look at this. And we see the same thing we just saw in example three, except in example four, we're now using variables to achieve the same effect. Well, defining it one time, saving it as a variable, which is one of the things we can do with changer macros in Harlow, right here. And then we can just apply it each time using the variable and its value to apply it to different hooks. Now let's kind of get even more advanced with this. Something interesting we can do is because we're using variables, we can apply the same value of that variable across different passages. So let's move to example five and look at kind of extending this concept based on things we already know about how story-wide variables work within Harlow. So over here, we can set this up, use the background set to green. I can show you this right here, and then I can move cleaning up my code a little bit, over to second passage. And we notice the variable again right here, for example. We see it for example five, and we also see it in second passage. So let's go ahead and move the start over here to example five. I will play, and notice we can jump over to second passage. The background of this text will also be green. Notice this is one of the powerful aspects of using variables in this way, especially with changer macros. So because we can change particular things, we can save those values within variables and apply them across the story using story-wide variables. Again, a kind of combination of previous concepts we've seen as we're learning Harlow 3.3. So let's take this a couple steps more. So we can apply hooks we've seen with the if macro. We can apply them to text in different ways using text color and background. We can also save as the value variable changer macros. We can do something else really cool in Heartland 3.3 as well. We can combine multiple instances of changer macros, in particular, kind of chain them together, add them all together, and then apply them to something. So let's move over to example six to see this. In this case, I'm using background white plus color purple. And so let's move over to example six. Let's go ahead and start from here just so we can see it. And we see the background is a particular color and the text is a particular color. And we are adding two different changer macros together. And this is a special use of the addition symbol within Harlow 3.3. As it comes to changer macros, we can combine them together. And this is even more powerful, especially given the concept I just covered using variables. So let's extend this even more and we can save the result of those. We can combine these two, set it as a combined value of a variable, and then apply that multiple times using what we've already seen with story-wide variables. So applied style here, and over in style passage, the exact same style, because it's still the value of the same variable. And this becomes an incredibly useful way to kind of extend this over. We can set it right here, Value the variable, apply it, and apply it, and apply it, and as long as that variable exists and it doesn't change its value, apply it as many times as we want. And this is incredibly powerful for again setting it one time and setting kind of the way we want, and then just using that story-wide variable multiple times. So let's finish this by looking at kind of a different usage of a hook. This is a kind of a very different way set up right here. So notice I'm setting the initial value of a variable right here using the set macro. And then I'm using something that we've seen before, link repeat. 
Now, link repeat's going to seem a little bit interesting because what's going to happen is I'm going to click on Heal Yourself when I show this demonstration, and then it's going to show, repeat, the contents of a hook for us. So let's go ahead and jump into example eight so we can see this in practice. Let's start over here. And let's look at kind of a different way hooks become really important as we think about these in this term. Heal yourself, heal yourself, heal yourself, heal. Notice each time the link is repeating the contents of the hook. So not only, as we previously seen, can we affect the styling of text, but we can also start to affect other combinations of macros. And this becomes how we kind of tap into more advanced patterns within Harlow. We can work with hooks, as we've already seen using the if macro. We can style text in particular ways using text color, background, and a number of other things that are available within Harlow 3.3. We can combine change your macros together. We can also save the value of changer macros, both singular and added together, as we saw as part of example seven, and as we start to get into as part of example eight, use the power of existing macros with their hooks to now create even more interactions. We can react to readers in a particular way. So hooks are a very powerful concept within Harlow 3.3, and we see them across a number of different macros that they are attached to and can affect a number of ways. In fact, moving into future examples, we will see hooks quite a bit. And again, as a quick reminder, when we're looking at hooks, we're particularly looking at the single open and closed square brackets, and then what they're attached to, usually another macro or some type of the value of the variable. Very powerful concept within Harlow 3.3, and something we will quite see, and something we will see quite often in more advanced patterns using Harlow as part of Twine 2.6. Thanks for watching.